you, Steve. Good morning. You know, back in 2016, the Democrats called those who supported Donald Trump deplorables. And now they're trying to disqualify their votes. Democrats still cannot get over the fact that the president won the election and they lost. Just last week at this podium, Nancy Pelosi went to point out that they created a timeline to impeach President Trump that she said started two and a half years ago. Many of you know of this timeline because once they took the majority, they had to decide who would become chairs of their committee. The impeachment committee of the judiciary, who could win? Jerry Nadler campaigned on that he would be the very strongest member to lead a potential impeachment. On the day of swearing in, these new freshmen that gave him the majority, a mere few hours after being sworn in, Congresswoman Tlaib proclaimed, we are going to impeach the mother. You had Al Green admitting that the Democrats have true fears if they do not impeach President Trump that he would win re-election. And now and today, we watched them introduce two articles of impeachment. They changed the course of Congress to take away due process for any point of where we are. It is the fear that Amal Alexander Hamilton had that came to fruition in this Congress. I just hope no Congress ever repeats what we're going through today. They have a lot of members on their side very concerned, because from the moment they started impeachment and letting the American public see what they believed and keep changing the term of what they thought was out there, it has been falling in the polls. If you need any more evidence of how unpopular impeachment is, watch the two press conferences today. After announcing impeachment within less than an hour, the speaker finally relented and said she would bring USMCA up. She has held it for more than a year, making America weaker in our negotiations with China. Our number one and number two trader, Mexico and Canada, was being held up within our own agreement. But those who are vulnerable in this vote for impeachment continuing to make the argument, as the rest of America was too. At no time when she would bring this bill up would there ever fear of it not passing. But the only reason she would finally relented is because of the unpopularity of impeachment itself. We watched in a hearing a Democrat constitutional scholar that did not vote for President Trump say this was the weakest, the thinnest, the fastest impeachment in the history of America. He then went to say if there was an abuse, it'd be abuse on the Democrats to move forward. The speaker must not have listened to that hearing. If the speaker had only waited 48 hours to release of the transcript, America would not be put through the nightmare. If the speaker would pause and read the IG report of the Inspector General, to thank in a place of America that we would have a law enforcement agency spy on a presidential campaign in more than 51 instances, not hold up to the rule of law or change all the information and evidence to be able to move forward on something they knew or should have known was not true is a sad day for America. But to compound that with the idea just because you created a timeline to impeach a president that you disliked, you ignored facts, we would never be here if they paid attention to the facts or the hearings. This is not a day that America will be proud about. It's not a day that history will write that anybody wants to repeat. Alexander Hamilton warned us that this day would come, that a majority would use their political power just for politics, even though we all raise our hands to uphold the Constitution. I just hope no Congress, no regardless who's in the majority, will ever take us down this path again. We have such great potential in this nation, but to have wasted a majority on this is an embarrassment to this Congress. Questions? Yes, ma'am. Does it make it harder to defend the president when his personal attorney is still traveling to Ukraine, investigating his campaign rivals, he claims he wants to give some sort of presentation about it to Congress? 
It does not, it is not hard to defend this president surely on the facts of what's out there. I think it's hard for the Democrats to move forward when they start with a quick pro quo to bribery to every other element they go. It's hard for the Democrats to continue this when the people they bring forth in their hearings are pretty much donors. Their expert witnesses when it comes to their scholars were donors to presidential campaigns. The idea that they're going to change the course of history, that staff is going to interview staff and then they're going to come out with articles of impeachment. What power do members of Congress who run to represent their districts have that they take it away? The idea that Democrats would control who can ask questions inside a hearing or how the structure would go. That's an embarrassment. So no, it is not difficult to defend this president because this president did nothing that's impeachable. It's hard to defend Democrats on how they're running this House and what they're doing inside their majority. But that's the difficulty that I have. But yes, question. For Giuliani so, to do what he's doing. He's an individual citizen. That is not the question that we have before us. It's about impeachment. You've got to understand what impeachment means. Impeachment is the removal of the highest elected person in this land. I don't care if you think Americans who support President Trump are deplorables, but you do not have the right to disqualify their vote just because you do not like President Trump. We are a nation of law, and the idea that they would use their power, they would lie, and they would continue to lie just because they dislike this president. They would change the course of history where they would move it from judiciary into the Intel Committee. They would disallow individuals to even ask questions. They would disallow the president to have due process to ask a question. They would not allow a minority to have witnesses. And they're proud about that? The idea of a vote of impeachment, the only higher vote I think we'd have a member of Congress is whether we send women or men out to war. But the way they have handled this from the very beginning I know they set a timeline and they wanted to keep their timeline. They just never paid attention to the facts. So they changed the rules to meet their timeline. They may think it's not important, but it goes to the sheer fact of the country of who we are. One of our greatest strengths is the rule of law. Other countries admire us because we believe in the rule of law. We believe in due process but not in Nancy Pelosi's house when she becomes speaker. She has weighed and hinged her entire majority on the impeachment of the president. When she selected Adam Schiff to be the intel chair and kept him there after he lied to the American public that he had proof beyond circumstantial, when we walked down through a nightmare, spent millions of dollars, went to 14 different countries and found that was a lie, you had an inspector general just give you a report yesterday to show that a law enforcement agency spied on a presidential campaign. And when they couldn't get their own facts, they changed it to go to a secret court in FISA to try to spy further. They based that all on something that the Democratic Party spent money on that was a lie to try to discredit somebody running for office. I would have used the majority to clean that up, to go back to the rule of law. I would not use the majority simply for your own political gain. And if you can't meet your timeline, change all the rules that this history has ever seen. So no, it is not difficult to defend this president. But it is very difficult to defend this Congress on what they have done, and history will not be kind to them. Democrats say that they are defending the rule of law and doing their constitutional duty because the Constitution, the, the proper role of the president. They say this president, on that call, asked a foreign government to announce an investigation by name of his political rival. So I'd just like to get each of you on the record. Do you agree with the president that that call was perfect? That's what we want presidents to do. The question we have before is, is that call impeachable? Even their own witnesses. You asked a question, please let me answer. Thank you. We are members of Congress. We're going to take a vote on two articles of impeachment. We're not going to take a vote on whether a call is perfect, because that's not what's before us. You may think impeachment's not important, but it hinges not only on our nation, but what the rest of the world is going to look at 
from an idea of who we are. See, I simply believe that America is more than a country. America is an idea. An idea so powerful that millions in Hong Kong will rise up for the idea of the freedoms, what we say we behold. The idea that these individuals in the majority, they got the transcript of a phone call, made a president do that that only made our nation weaker in our defense. Because to tell me what other foreign leader is going to be open and honest with whoever is sitting in the Oval Office. But they did that because they said they had a whistleblower they did not know, but the head of the Intel Committee actually met with the whistleblower. They started this all on the idea that the administration would not allow the whistleblower to come forward. We saw all the Sunday shows. We saw all of what Adam Schiff said, that he's going to fight so hard to allow that whistleblower to come forward. He is the only one who has denied us the whistleblower for coming forward. But anywhere else in a law in America, that if you base something upon a hearsay or an informant, that informant has to come forward, but not in the idea of impeaching this president. Because somehow the rule of law doesn't uphold to him because they think the people who voted for them are deplorable. Nothing on that phone call is wrong. That was a case that has already been open. The attorney general was already looking into it. If somebody is an elected official and they did something wrong, but they run for another office, somehow what they did is not wrong anymore. Why do you fall into a trap of an idea when we're talking about the highest elected office in this land and in this entire world? That they're so brazen that they just the dislike that they will change the rule of law to impeach them. They just introduced two articles. And your question is about, is it perfect? No, the question is, is it impeachable? And the answer is absolutely no. And even their own witnesses, when asked, name me something that is impeachable, they could not name it. When the American public watched these hearings, the support went further down. They held a press conference at 9 o'clock to announce impeachment, and at 10, she finally relented and yet let USMCA come up. She held it for more than a year. We're negotiating with China. Mexico's our number one trader. Canada's our second. Why? Because it's another promise that this president made that he kept. It's something no one thought he could do, that he could renegotiate NAFTA and make America stronger. He did it. But again, the speaker has the power of when it could come up. She held it for more than a year, when every economist said you would create hundreds of thousands of new jobs. She wished we'd go into a recession. But we just had a jobs report that no one thought would happen. Grew by more than 200,000. Where did Canada? They went down. They will not give this president any credit. They are more willing to tear the country down if they could tear this president down. But he's withstood this all. Why? Because he did nothing wrong. And he's not below the law. Yes. By... Uh Agreeing to the USMCA, has Nancy Pelosi done Donald Trump a favor? No, she's actually agreeing to it as she's doing her job. Waiting a year, she has weakened America. We have been in negotiations with China for how long? Would America not be stronger if we had the USMCA agreed to prior to the negotiations with China? Everyone would tell you yes. Why did we have to wait this long to have these many more jobs that are going to create it. Why did we have to wait this long to have the GDP grow? Maybe because she wanted to give as much time as possible before the next election, just to narrow that. We're less than a year away before the election, and just now USMCA came up. Yes, yeah, she's probably very fearful that the president's going to get a lot of credit, because he deserves it, and so does Lighthizer. And Lighthizer showed the professionalism through all of this. Through everything they said about the president, he was professional every single day in this negotiation. The idea that you brought two countries outside of America together, and I hope you go back and write the lesson about this, because I believe business schools will study this. It was difficult to get to this agreement. But what did the president do? He showed part of the art of the deal. He then went to Mexico before they even changed governments and got an agreement. Then he brought Canada into it. If you couldn't get them all together at once like he tried, he showed the art of the deal of how to make it happen. 
it was the probably some of the finest negotiations I've seen by this president. And it just shows if he did not have to spend all this time being investigated, how much greater this country will be 